Okay, we're back, day two of Node Summit live in San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier, and this is theCUBE, our final wrap-up session with the Silicon Angle crew, Alex Williams and Clint Finley. Um, Want to just say thanks to all you folks watching out there, Mark Hopkins and Keenan for producing. Uh, great job. Uh, we're at the end of our broadcast here at theCUBE and Node Summit has been an amazing uh, experience uh, for me and uh, learned a lot, met a lot of new people, uh, understood a lot more about the community and the capabilities of Node.js, which is, this is what it's all about. Node Summit is the inaugural conference for the Node community. And, uh, Alex and Clint, let's just kind of wrap this up. Let's kind of put a bow on this uh, event here. And and what did we learn? I mean, I, you know, I, I learned, you know, I'll start. I mean, I learned that Node is a lot more real and legit and high performance than I thought it was. And I kind of did my homework. You know, I was excited by the possibilities of it. Um, but I really loved how, how legit it is. And, and uh, one of my comments on an earlier cube was, uh, uh, I'd categorize this as a hurricane four, uh, category four hurricane, mainly because some tiles are falling off the building roofs, trees are coming down, so there's some disruption in the technical theater and the business theater, and you're seeing that here. We're seeing VCs here, funding companies, a lot of startups, and the geeks. Um, so it's legit. What, what are you guys learning? Let's talk about what we've learned. Clint? I think what uh, what I saw that that's sticking with me the most is that there are some uh, pretty serious unresolved controversies in uh, in in the way Node relates to other technologies. Uh, talking to Node skeptics, there's a lot of discussion of things like Java's Netty framework, uh, Python's Twisted framework, or the capabilities that are in the programming language Erlang, and. Uh, some people say, well, Node does certain things better than those, or that you can do certain things easier in Node than you can do it do with those. But on the, there's other people who say, well, no, that's not true. You could just you could totally do something so much easier in Twisted than you could in in Node. Um, and I I haven't seen any resolution to that. So I, I guess maybe that's a cop out of this. I didn't really learn something. That was in an particular, observation. Maybe that was an observation. A, um, I think that speaks to the community too. It's a very young community. And the, the people here, a lot of them, are very innovative. And, and the, the level of sophistication I saw in the startups was, was much greater than I've seen in other, you know, in other events that I've been where there's been startup competitions. And so that's encouraging. Um, I think that there's just going to have to be some maturing in like how these front end, really these front end developers for the most part, Interact with the bat, you know, and learn more about those about the systems behind it. Sure, but there there were some people here who, uh, you know, they they weren't front end developers. They were, they were, were back end developers who just saw the the potential to to use uh, uh, to do something really simple were, in JavaScript. To for sure, but I think that you know, I think that there's this there is this perception of like it's real time capabilities and you know ability to do so much so easily. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's not that deeper understanding of the, of the systems behind it. Well, I mean, I think that's what Theo's, uh, Schlossenegger's view that the operation side is a lot bit different from the software side, which is the programming side. But, but it's clear to me though, Alex, on that point, that there is some advantages, real advantage, and we're seeing the demos here and the actual products where Very Node is so. specifically a benefit, like Voxer, we're seeing yes. some of the, the companies upstairs handling the chat stuff. There's some specific product benefits that are actually right. realized today. Right. Um, so, yes. you know, the question of how that affects ops and the scale point is a whole nother conversation. Right. I think that's worth watching. And I learned, that was my, one of my big learning points was, this, it's great on that side, the DevOps side, the programming, the rapid iteration, the agile programming, all that stuff, ain't that goes on in, in open source and commercialization of these kinds of products. But in the real world, in these big enterprises, and these big service providers, there's a real ops issue around systems performance that is a whole nother league of its own. So I think that's something that I learned that, that that it's actually pretty obvious when you think about it, but it's clear that there's two two worlds. Um, so it's that was interesting. But I, I, there's some things that I really find quite compelling about you know about what we're seeing again, those real time capabilities, um, the the way that platforms are emerging for you know delivering messages. You know that, for instance, you know to multiplayer, multi MMO, what was it called? Multiplayer games. Um, and how those are, you know, and how those, there's kind of like this ecosystem emerging that's 
that's building very, very quickly. And, you know, Stephen O'Grady was saying on, on theCUBE earlier today that he's never seen anything grow as quickly as Node.js has. And he says he's never seen um, a technology go into the trough of disillusionment so fast. And he thinks that's where we are now, and he's just not uncertain if it's been if it's been spit out the other side, and now it's going to really gain mainstream acceptance, but I think the chances are that it will. That came up. That came up a lot, actually. The 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 excitement of Node, but also the fear, if you will, around the hype, or or is it overhyped? Yeah. I mean, it's legitimate in my mind. So I just want to make that clear. I do not think it's hyped up. However, given all the activity, it could be misconstrued as super hyped. But so that's where I think I I, I kind of felt and, and heard specifically that you know wondering and we had a getting ahead of our skis as a, as Charles Beeler said and some other folks. So that's interesting. And it, 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 growing so fast. You know, it's still young. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think where it's going to be resilient is is in its community. And yeah. That, and that's been really clear, is that there's a community that's, uh, like, paradoxically tight-knit but really inclusive. Uh, so, you know, everybody knows everybody knows each other, but they, they also make a, a good effort to bring in people. And, it, and that's going to be hard to maintain, that, that level of inclusiveness as, as the community grows but having that having that com that community uh, movement is is what's going to keep Node around. It's what's going to keep Node improving. Uh, we uh, we didn't get uh, Isaac on the guy that created uh, the Node package manager, but that's a, a big part of Node is how it how you can extend it with the with with add-ons and modules. Uh, you know, it's it's a platform. So there's you know there's other things. There's Express. There's Socket IO. There's, so there's, you know, there's all this value being created. It's it, it's a lot like Hadoop, like, I, when we talked yeah, about. I, mean, I, John, think I think John, you said it last night. Like, this is the Web 2.0 era is, is essentially passed, and now we're entering a new era. And Node really is rep, Node .js is representative of that. Yeah, I mean, I think you know what Ajax was always kind of like, oh, Ajaxy kind of things on Web 2.0, but actually, Web 2.0 never really materialized in my mind, at least. And you can see that with you know what's happened with some of the websites that cover Web 2.0, they kind of turn into more about Google, Apple, and whatever. But like, I think this is really about what Web 2.0 is about because you're talking about web apps, and mobile amplifies the value when you see that kind of performance around the I/O. Um, so I'm I'm excited, and I think you know on the community side, what I I learned, and I think this was kind of how we branded it in, in our conversation earlier, is that the community I would is, is, has been described here in theCUBE as respectful and professional. So to me, I think really my observation of the community is it's young, still close-knit, but what's really impressive to me, Clint and Alex, is that it's respectful and professional. Yeah. And that's going to do really good justice for those guys as they start to reach out, as we heard in the last panel, around working with other yeah. open source projects. Mm -hmm. And it's a very open collaborative approach, very socially integrated, but I like that professionalism. It's a, it's a breath of fresh air, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so that's going to be a big plus for them. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, one of the things that's so, you know, so refreshing here is you do see, you see the power of the ecosystem in terms of the services that people are using, you know, and, and how that's helping really, helping Node.js grow. For instance, GitHub, I think GitHub's a real kind of catalyst, you know, for, for the growth of Node.js. In other ways too, but you know, we have, the, the, the device market has just exploded, right? And there's all types of different services you can use to either build apps, so that's, you know, that, that, that market where we're going to start to see rapid you know, the rapid capability to build applications is really, I think, going to fire this up. Big data, mobile, all those trends are really coming together at a great time. We'll just have to see how big this event is next year. Yeah, I mean, other things that I observed and learned and you know watched is the, the systems architectures is a mindset. We've heard that over and over again, that Node is a mindset. You know, the browser, HTTP, uh, is first class citizens are some quotes. So you got that notion that you got some more systems capabilities with Node, that was impressive. It, it made me think more about those systems challenges that Theo Schlossnager pointed out. Um, and the other thing that I uh, observed or watched and learned here was the uh, entrepreneurial activity. So, um, and there's two points to that. One is there's a lot of entrepreneurs here who are really doing some coding, doing some good work. The Node Jam here on day two is 
tons of startups bootstrapped at, that highlights the value proposition of cloud computing. You know, low cost to get into the market and they could rapidly develop and get something out there that's functional and can deliver value. Yes. So I, I'm really impressed with that. Yeah. That being said, I do not think that there's a lot of companies here that are, that are venture backable. I'll tell you yeah. why. A lot of the companies here look like features and they don't look like a real company in my mind in terms of the classic venture capital. So I think traditional venture will reject most of these companies. Instead, the angel market is so robust now with Y Combinator and AngelList, they're all viable under seed and angel funding because the VCs can let those accelerators do the work. On, but the on VCs that. are struggling with this because, you know, we were talking about it earlier, you know, yesterday, and they understand that the cost to actually develop apps is so far less. Yeah. And they don't need that much capital, but their funds are not really designed, are not not structured. I got some email. I, I got some emails from some VC friends who knew watching the program, and uh, you know they always watch the cube. But the comment to me was off the record, uh, and I won't name the source of the VC. Was uh, I won't fund any of those companies there. Um, what I'll do is I'll let the angel guys, Angel List and Y Combinator, vet them out for me. And I found that very interesting. But I think that's consistent around some of the other VCs I talked to. But I tell you what's good about all this. One, there's a lot of angel capital out there through AngelList and Y Combinator, so it doesn't cost that much to get these teams formed. However, I think you're going to see more failure than successes, and I think that's actually going to be a good thing. I'll tell you why. This community is so respectful and professional, I think you'll see companies get formed out of those failures. Yes. Mm -hmm. Better companies, because of the experimentation and the tinkering of Node, will create more skills and create, I think, derivative ventures where people will find each other out in the community. Yeah, well there's there's another possible scenario there in, in terms of the venture funding and, and how it could play out though. Uh, you know, we've been seeing a lot more uh, of what people are calling uh, uh, talent acquisitions. There's, I, I forget the, the sort of uh, funny buzzword uh, portmanteau of it, acqui hire, uh, acqui hire, hire. <laughs> yeah, and I think that could be what you see a lot of here because you yeah. said a lot of these look like features. Uh, Web 2.0 went through a lot of that too. Yeah. What, really, what they were doing was they were building something that they wanted to sell to Google. Yeah, and uh, I, I I don't know that a lot of these these guys here are are saying, well, I want this is a feature I want to sell to to Google or Microsoft, but that's still I, I think uh, a a pretty likely outcome for or some just, of these Or just frank, frankly, just talent. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Salesforce.com is growing like crazy through their acquisitions. Yeah, they, they want the talent you know. or they want some of the IP, you know, or, you know, yeah. just one particular feature. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I think a lot I of companies right won't, like, won't have a chance to fail because somebody will want to buy them for some for some other reason. And we know, we know how... It's so hard to hire right I mean, now. This oh, is, yeah, look, look, at how Twitter, look how Twitter was formed. Twitter was formed because of Evan Williams' failure with Odium, right? And they right. get kicking around. Oh, so passing. I think when you have these emerging environments where you have these communities, the cross-pollination around the entrepreneurs will be really important. So I think that's what I'm interested in watching as well, is uh, I think failure is not bad here because there's so much skill acquisition that these developers are getting through Node that no matter what their outcome is on their venture, they're going to be viable in any way, whether they go work for a big company or where they hook up with another entrepreneur and do something bigger. So I think the yeah. market will play that out. You know, and I, and I just think my, my final takeaway here is like, this is such a refreshing event. I mean, it's so invigorating to see these people, like really young people developing really amazing stuff. And that, that, that's really what, you know, what it's about, just to be, you know, to, to, to see something and to, ha to have it thought through in whole new dimensions. That is, you know, that is the true essence of innovation. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I would just say in, in, in closing, this is a great event, great technology. Uh, one of the most exciting moments as an, as an aside this week uh, here was the fact that we launched DevOps Angle. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So for the folks out there, Alex and Clint have been launching these vertical publications. First one was uh, Services Angle, uh, and the diamond sponsor there is EMC, and that's all about the services and the systems and the critical infrastructure around you know, big enterprise. And this week we launched DevOps Angle, which is all about the emerging cloud, Node.js, these emerging communities that really are going to make a difference in rapid application development. And I couldn't be more pleased, guys, than the validation that we got from Dell. Yes, so Dell, can I show my t-shirt here? De you show the t-shirt. There we oh. go, thank you Dell. Dell. Thank you very Dell much. Dell Computer mm -hmm. has stepped up 
to be the <laughs> diamond sponsor for <laughs> DevOpsAngle.com, a new publication within the SiliconANGLE network. And so Alex and Quinn will be doing double time between DevOps Angle and Services Angle. So we'll have the Ops world covered and the Dev world covered like a blanket. So look for all the coverage on Services Angle and DevOps and Angle. And please reach out to us if you're interested in writing you know, about DevOps or if you're interested in writing about this whole new world of services. We're, we're actively looking for people, either yeah. as contributors or even as writers who we hire on a part-time yeah. basis. We'd like to add more sponsors to it. We're going to do it very much like the NASCAR logo, like the events, you know, platinum sponsor, gold, silver, and then we have um, special sponsorships for startups. So um, that helps us build this great content and hire more people. And of course, the Cube, we'd love to go to the events and we're going to, you'll see us more this year at a lot of events. Our next event is coming up at the O'Reilly Strata Conference and that's going to be really a great show because that really continues this conversation about DevOps and cloud with big data. And that is all coming together. It's a beautiful world. It's a great time, guys. It's, uh, you know, we've been doing cloud mobile social for a few years now and everything's coming right into our wheelhouse and uh, it's very exciting times for SiliconANGLE. So, well, thank uh, you very much, John. This has been, yeah. it's great to, to be part of this, this group. Right. Yeah, thanks, John. Thanks, Keenan and Mark. Uh, yeah, They're thanks, On Kenan. the other side of the cameras all day, every day. All right, and thank you guys for watching. All the readers out there, siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv. You'll see all the reruns on siliconangle.tv. There'll be a channel for uh, there for uh, Node, and uh, we'll advertise that on Twitter. Stay tuned, and if you want more on Twitter, go to Node Summit as the hashtag, and we'll be communicating on that in the back channel um, and uh, publishing more and more content every day. So that's a wrap from uh, Node Summit, live in San Francisco. The innovative Node.js is off off the platform, taking flight, Node Summit is coming to an end, and